The big winter weather event is over, and in the wake, a snow track from the south central U.S. up to the northeast. We'll take a closer look at that shortly, but weather around the world. The hot spot for today, still looking at northwestern Australia, the town of Paraburdu, 112 degrees. And that is a iron mining town that was established in the 1970s. A lot of red color in that soil, and that of course is the iron oxides. The world's cold spot, once again, Deliankir, right there on that lonely bridge to Magadan and Yakutsk. There's a look at that highway, a couple of miles up the road from Deliankir. Could you imagine breaking down on this road? That would probably be a little bit different than breaking down on Interstate 40. Here's a quick look at the surface patterns for this afternoon, looking at the GFS. And this does show a weak frontal system in Colorado, warm front through Oklahoma, and ahead of it, lots of warm air advection. And that's because we got that southerly flow in place, bringing up moisture and warmth, downslope flow, through Texas into southwestern Oklahoma, and another weather system up there in Oregon and Idaho. And in the southeastern U.S., there's the outgoing remains of that wintry weather we had over the weekend and early this week. So that's what used to be the old Arctic high that is just sinking southeast into the subtropical ridge. And we'll bring it on up to 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, the top of the troposphere. And this gives us a look at the general flow. And we see that the Pacific storm track is trying to get reestablished once again. Typically, when we're in these really strong wintry weather patterns like what we had over the weekend, we have very strong ridging on the west coast, strong troughing in the central and eastern U.S., and deep northwesterly flow through much of the country. So that appears to have finally broken down. And we're seeing these very strong jets get active once again off the west coast. So let's run this forward through the remainder of the week. We see a healthy 150 knot jet moving towards California. There's a negative tilt trough right there along the California coast for Wednesday. And some amplification of this ridge in the western U.S., and a little bit of amplification of the troughing out east. So the northwesterly flow picks back up once again, and one last gasp of Arctic air coming down through the Midwest and Northern Plains, and not as much impact as what we had over the past week. Going into the weekend and next week, a couple of troughs working onshore, and those move through the Rockies into the Central Plains, and we're gonna see an increase in moisture with that deepening of southerly flow coming in from Mexico, we see a tendency towards troughing in the Rockies and western U.S. And by the time we get up to midweek, looks like a pretty strong trough. This is almost a early spring type pattern. And the other piece of the puzzle is whether the precipitable water recovers. Typically when we have these strong Arctic outbreaks, things dry out quite a bit because it's very dry up in the Arctic regions and you can't really hold much water vapor in the air. So we do see the moisture start to recover going into Thursday and Friday. A couple of plumes of moisture coming up from the western Gulf with these waves passing through. Lots of moisture on the west coast towards the end of the week and some of it does make its way into Arizona precipitable water about half an inch to an inch. And in Texas, some return flow really getting established, even one and a half inch precipitable water in Corpus Christi and near Victoria. And last week, we talked about how there was not much regeneration of Arctic air up north. Those oranges, minus 30 and below, are critical, and we really don't have these. In fact, conditions up north are normal to slightly above normal. See, it's even up to zero to 10 degrees above in Fahrenheit, which is pretty toasty up there. So we do have a 1050 millibar high across Yukon, which is bringing down a meager supply of 
weak Arctic air. So it's not totally over, but just not any of the cold stuff on tap. Towards early next week, we do see some bitterly cold air regenerate up there in Nunavut, but the trajectory on this heads more towards Quebec. There it goes. So that's going to arrive there about Tuesday. In effect, maybe Maine, maybe Montreal, but not the rest of the U.S. We're going to be under a mild pattern for the time being. If we get to the very end of the sequence, we're looking like this, and there is quite a bit of frigid air up north. But as far as potential to bring that down, it's not really clear this far out. But as far as what we've got going on right now, this is a few hours ago when we still had daylight. You can see some snow across southern Arkansas and some snow up there near Little Rock. Looks like it's all melted in Texas. There's how it looks across Arkansas and Tennessee. Some of this is the bare rice fields through here, so the albedo on those is a little bit higher, so you don't want to read too much into that, but you can see the snow track right through here all the way up towards the Appalachians. And we follow it up north. There's all that snow on the ground all the way up to the Washington, D.C. area. And you can see even more snow up to the north around Champaign, Springfield, Indianapolis, and up towards Toledo. And of course, we have the weather deteriorating out west once again, so we want to look at the water vapor imagery. And there we've got that next wave moving through the Pacific Northwest. Looks like some strong bear clinicity in parts of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada. The 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This resolves it into two separate waves, one over Colorado and another in Washington and Oregon. So that's going to be the main area of lift out ahead of it around Spokane and Pendleton. And this evening, that wave drops southeast into Idaho and becomes more channeled. The other wave in Colorado moves into Kansas and New Mexico with the area of associated lift out ahead of it. Then going through the rest of the day tomorrow, a strong jet diving into the northern Rockies. This signature indicates a strong polar front jet. Another channel through Colorado Springs down towards Amarillo and the Red River Valley. In the left front quadrant of that northerly jet, an area of upper level lift. That's going to be upper level divergence across Nebraska, and that'll help support this next wave moving into the central plains. And a good chart for looking at the vertical motion field is Q vectors. This is the 500 millibar heights and Q vectors, and the shading is the convergence. There's Q vector convergence around Spokane, and I guess that'd be Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, and that drops southeast into the northern Rockies overnight and emerges into the high plains around dawn. There's the area of ascent across central Nebraska around midday, and by evening moves into Iowa. Back behind it, subsidence. That area of subsidence, mass continuity, dictates that we're going to have rising pressures at the surface, anti-cyclogenesis, and we're going to expect to see a high building in across North Dakota and Montana. That's going to be tomorrow night. Then going into Friday, upper level lift moving into the Great Lakes region, large area of subsidence in the central plains, and the whole thing moves eastward into the northeastern U.S., well-developed area of upper level lift across the northeastern states, midday Friday, with subsidence across the Midwest. Another trough coming down the backside through the Great Lakes region, but not really much lift, maybe out around Chicago, maybe a brief ingredient for snow showers late on Friday. And gradually we just get the heights building in, subsidence, and then just kind of a quiet pattern of ridging across the central U.S. Then we shift our sights to the west. A couple of troughs here and there. Looks like one there, another one in California, one offshore of Washington, and you can just follow the rest to see what's coming up. Yep, strong dynamics in Mexico, pretty far south. So Texas will be looking at disturbances coming in from the southwest for midweek. And in the northern stream, the southern disturbance here in Montana for Thursday drops down into the central Rockies, 
later on Thursday and then into New Mexico for Friday. So a lot of weather to look at for next week. So let's look at that forecast. This is the composite chart for the surface. And I've got everything on here. I've got the winds, the pressure, the clouds, the precipitation. Everything's on here that's important. The only thing that's missing on here is the fronts. And I did make a mistake. I decided to draw the fronts on this chart, which does not have the cloud fields. So what I'll probably do is on Friday, I'll start drawing these fronts on the chart that has the clouds. But I'll take you through the sequence real quick before we go into the other chart. Yeah, you can see that Arctic front moving south. Then after that clears, we're going to see a frontal boundary get reestablished on the Texas Gulf Coast. There it is right there. And a series of waves moving up the Gulf Coast region. So let's go in for a closer look with that other chart and look at the weather that we have this evening. And I don't want to dumb down these charts. I want you to have the best, and that's what this is. This is kind of like the big comprehensive weather picture. Like there in Kansas, you can see clouds across the state, overcast. That's going to be that upslope flow working around the north side of this low pressure area in the panhandles. That's that developing weather system coming together right there. And eventually that will link up with the other system in Idaho. So if we bring this forward, you're going to watch this area right here. That's going to be the developing weather system coming together in Wyoming. You can see that Arctic front starting to really push south through the state. And there's a warm front right there at around Akron, Colorado to Goodland, Kansas. And eventually that works down south. Not much development of that surface cyclone, just kind of a stable wave and just kind of being overwhelmed by that push of Arctic air coming south. So there it is on its way south, snow developing in Nebraska around midday. Remember, we have that area of upper level lift crossing Nebraska. And we get that anticyclogenesis up there in the northern plains pushing that front south. And we watch for deterioration of weather out around Chicago. Maybe, yeah, that's going to be at those little snow flurries across Lake Michigan. Anyway, large area of cold air advection coming south for Friday. So cold in much of the central U.S., but not as bad as what we had over the weekend. And let's go ahead and see what kind of temperatures we're looking at. This is from the latest 18Z GFS. Some of these are going to be viewer numbers. And we go into tonight and then tomorrow morning. So some of that Arctic air starting to filter south, temperatures going below zero once again. By tomorrow evening, that Arctic air continues to work south. The zero line, however, from just north of Duluth out towards Rapid City. And the freezing line that runs from Nashville to Ponca City and over to Boise City. Then going into Friday morning, wow, now it's getting much colder below zero in Des Moines and Omaha. By evening, not much of a warm up there, up to two degrees at Des Moines, one degree at Omaha, and down south in Arkansas and Oklahoma, dropping to the 20s once again. By early Saturday, the minus 10s are back in the northern plains, down to the teens along the Interstate 40 corridor. And then on Saturday about midnight, that's the last chart that I have there, but a core of Arctic air across northwestern Illinois. Here's how it looks down south. This is where we're at right now, going into tomorrow morning. Cold air starting to come south through Kansas. By evening, 20s in Kansas through eastern Colorado. For early Friday, much colder once again, starting out with 26 at DFW. By afternoon, barely above freezing at Shreveport, Dallas, and Amarillo. For Saturday morning, cold once again from the Red River northward, and then for the afternoon, well, that's about as far as we're going to get, but looks like another cold one. And I'm going to leave you with some footage, not from this past week, but this is from that 2021 outbreak in February, February 19th. 
a look at North Texas from the air. So enjoy some of that footage. And we'll see everybody back here again on Friday for another edition of this program. I want to thank all of our supporters out there and all the people that have picked up a book or some software at weathergraphics.com. All of that helps support this program. Hope you have a great evening. Take care and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.